And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The first Flash Friday of 2008 on the Tom Like a Show. Headlights on across North America. Turn your headlights on, guys. Ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, show them your cans. You see a nice pair of uh, cans out there, a nice pair of gazangas. You just uh, call us, give us your full report. Where did you see them? What they look like? What are we missing out there? You just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM and give us your full report. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. You can call in and talk to us about anything that's on your mind, anything at all. It can be anything you discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. As long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Jamel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How no, you doing? I'm doing okay. That's good. I'm calling to complain about that damn Sex in the City movie. You're okay. complaining about it? You want to complain about it? Yes. Why would you be complaining about it? Uh, because. I made the mistake of going to go see it. Yeah, I didn't go see it against my will, okay? Actually, I had some interest in going to go see it only because I missed the Devil Wears Prada, okay, and, you know, at the theaters, and, you know, I actually enjoyed it. When the I saw Devil it. Wears Prada? Oh, yeah. my. You know what I mean? I'm not gay. I'm I, I think you gay. wear Prada if you went to see the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> no, I didn't go see it. Like I said, I saw it at some chick's house. She had on DVD and, you know, she wanted me to watch it with her, so I did. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm interested in women's fashion. I don't wear women's fashion, but I like it because, you know, it, it looks good on, on the chicks that model it. And those are the kind of chicks that I'm into. Um, and so... But those are, know, those are what we call high-maintenance chicks, you see. Yes. If that's what I, they like wearing, that's what they want you to be buying. I, I know that for sure, but guess what? I do, I do not dig it themselves. And I make that abundantly clear. So then, how did you end up going to Sex of the City, um, Mister Abundantly Clear? How did that happen? Well, like I said, I didn't go see it against my will. I so you wanted to see it because you wanted to see a bunch of over the hill turkey necks uh, wearing designer clothing. Uh, no, but like I said, because I want I missed the Devil Wears Prada, and I actually enjoyed that movie. And so I'm thinking, you enjoyed hey, the Devil Wears that? Prada, and so um, you said you watched it, but now you're telling me you enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I said, well, I enjoyed The Wears Prada, yeah. What was I your favorite What was Prada. your favorite scene in The Devil Wears Prada? Uh, my favorite scene? Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of them. I just hated the ending, that's all. You hated the ending, but tell us your yeah. favorite. Tell us one of your favorite scenes. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. There's too many. Who was in that movie? Do you have Meryl Streep? Uh, Meryl Streep, yes. Well, you know, she's an old hag. Uh, but, oh, my goodness, what's her name? Uh, her name is Anne something. Anne Hathaway. Okay, she's pretty cool. She's pretty cute. She's not really hot, but she's cute. All right, and uh, tell me about the scene in the movie you really enjoyed. Like I said, it's a lot of them. A lot of them. So you didn't enjoy any particular scenes? Oh, like I said, uh, for the most part, I enjoyed the movie. I just hated the ending. Okay, so then you thought, well, The Devil Wears Prada, that was so good. Boy, I'd love to see what your TiVo was recommending. Uh, (laughs) So so now you went to see Sex in the City, another movie about fashion. Right. Okay, and how was it? Uh, I hated it. Why? Um, clothing because, the clothing wasn't as nice as in The Devil Wears Prada? Uh, in my opinion, it wasn't, okay, but that wasn't the reason why I didn't So like the, it. the better clothing in The Devil Wears Prada? Yes. 
don't think so anywhere. And you're not gay? Hell no. You sure? Oh, I promise. Do you uh, go out with the guys and tell them about your uh, movie choices? Uh, actually, some of them, yeah, most of them, no. Do they think you're gay? No, hell no. <laughs> Do they think that's a good idea? They maybe want to go out and see The Devil Wears Prada now that you enjoyed it so much? No. They, they said hell no. I see. Okay. So what was it specifically besides the fashions that you did like in Sex of the City? Oh, well, first of all, they bashed away a whole, a whole goddamn lot in that damn movie. Yeah, are you surprised? Uh, really, yeah, because I, I'm not I'm not a fan of the series. I see, I thought maybe you'd read about it somewhere. No. Huh? Okay. And secondly, yeah, uh, the main chick, whatever her name is. Okay, yeah, I just saw her hands in that in that in that damn movie, and I'm all like, oh god, no. Okay. And what really makes what really did it for me was there was. Um, uh, there was one chick in the movie, and she treated her man like garbage. Okay, I mean, he was a complete punk. I mean, he was a whip. She walked all over his ass. Okay, and what I did was I got up and I walked out. Really? Uh, yes, I got up and I walked out and let chick sit in there. She was calling me and calling me. I was like, I'm not answering. Okay, I left the movie theater. I caught the bus home, okay, because she drove. Wow. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, and so around mm, one thirty two a.m., she's calling me on my phone, and I'm like, I DTB at that point. Wow. Hang yeah. on a second, Jamel. Hang on a second, Michael. What did you want to say to Jamel? Oh, dude, what are you kidding me? Take away his man car. That's a direct violation. What kind of a man is right mind to go out and see this stupid Sex in the City movie? Nobody I know goes. And I mean, my wife, she wanted to drag me to it. But come on, man. That's got, that, no, no, no. I mean, there was this one guy at work, and he's kind of prudy already. So I kind of expected that he'd want to see it. But, dude, what, are you kidding me? Come on. You know yeah. what? Now, if a fruity guy wants to see it, uh, that's one thing. But, Jamel, you? No, not, believe me, I'm as straight as a ray gun, bro. Okay, you know what? He's as straight as a ray gun, Michael. As straight, as, straight, as, straight as a ray gun. Oh, uh huh. Straight as a tulip is more like it. Lord have mercy. Never, Never, dude. I'm six two and a half, and I weigh 235 pounds. All muscle. Hey, even all muscle guys are gay. Most most guys who work out do so because they're gay, man. They want to check out the meat market over there at their local 25 Fitness. Find no, out what's not even roaming happening. around, so to speak. Not close, bro. Not close at all. Not close at all? Come on, Not dude. close at all, bro. Uh, dude, you are... T oh, man. A violation right there, every man card, dude. Um, hey, I'm hey, out, you dude. know what? Hey, you know what? Actually, I, you know, I, I know where you're coming from, okay. And I question myself. I'm like, what? You know, just why? Okay, and really, I don't know why. And you know, I really hate myself for going to go see that damn flick. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Michael, thank you. Jamel, thank you as well. Wow. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Richard is listening to our online stream in Austin, Texas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, my king, my father. Richard. Yes, sir. What up? Man, uh, I had to DTB my girlfriend because of you. Tell us why. Oh, seems that she was having phone sex with her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <from another state. laughs> Yeah, and uh, she was recording this in her diary about all these things that they were talking about, all these fantasies. And I had a hunch, and I was listening to one of your shows about cheating and getting out. So uh, I went over to her house when she was gone, and uh, she hid her diary really well, so I found it. And I found the entries, and I wasn't surprised. So when all this was going on, we talked about taking a trip to Vegas. I was paying. You know, we were going to go gamble and have a good time. And she was so stoked on this trip, Father. And what I did was, I told her, I said, if we're going to go on this trip, we're going to have to go on the fly. So I'm going to have to FedEx you the tickets, you know, or put them in an envelope and leave them at your door and we'll ju just go. And she was so pumped up. So at work, I taped it out this really simple letter saying that, hey, you've been busted. And I put it in a FedEx envelope and wrote her name on it and sent it FedEx to right to her door. <laughs> How did she react to that? 
Uh, what were you doing looking at my computer? How dare you? Yeah. I have a right to privacy. The neighbor that I know, he told me it was one of the loudest screams he had heard. And then she started blowing up my phone, calling me, telling me I was paranoid and I was crazy, but you got busted. And this was two days ago. And I just got late today, this morning, and I got another girl lined up tonight, and I'm getting more ass in a rental car. <laughs> <laughs> More ass than a rental car. Them. Well, thank yeah. you for that, Richard. I'm proud of you. Yeah, and you guys, if you've got a gut feeling that your girl is doing something, you're more than likely right. Just go with the bad step and be quick and move on it. And uh, can you take me out with um, two thank you Jesuses and a Dino voicemail, please? All right, here you go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, now you are the biggest asshole I've ever met in my entire life. Your like is 101 sh is completely retarded. Okay, you just got lucky, hon. Let me tell you, it will never happen again. You are such a piece of sh I don't know what this Tom like is. I'm so cool, and these are my rules. That's such bull <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. You know, before I uh, got involved seriously with a woman um, and got married and had kids, I would have thought you were a chauvinist pig. <laughs> but now that I've had the, the luxury of experiencing what all that's about, you couldn't be more on target and... And God bless you for just speaking your mind. It's appreciated. Well, the people with experience know what's going on. We know what time it is. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but I do wanted to kind of just uh, do a little segue to the uh, election and um, the primaries recently. Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, she pretty much solidified in the in the mind of every man out there that uh, that definitely she wasn't the right person. I, I, I can't uh, imagine a woman being in the White House. Uh, you know, you have enough women screwing up... Uh, people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis I don't, right. think, I don't think we need you know i don't think we need to put that type of person in charge right exactly yeah so anyway but you know i don't listen to you often enough but when i do it's refreshing it's enlightening and it's straight up on the nose and 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 so you know more power to you tony sounds good to me thank you for the call 1-800-5800-TOM i was uh, trying to talk into the mic and i couldn't hear my own voice I don't know what happened. Could not hear myself. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that was Ed McMahon on the Larry King show. That's what I was trying to say over the music. <laughs> Very weird. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ashley on Flash Friday. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Okay. So I just had a flash Friday moment. Um, I'm on my way home and I have my headlights on and I see some girl next to me with hers on and we actually flashed each other. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it was very enjoyable and I want to thank you for that. How are her knockers? Tell me about her. Well, she was like a brunette. She had sunglasses on. I think it was like a green car. Um, I, I flashed her first and... It was funny. I just started listening to your show because I started a new job, and a bunch of the girls, they actually listen, and um, they were saying, like, oh, I wouldn't flash a guy. I would flash a girl, and I was like, hmm, you know what? I think I might do that, too, and there you go. Wow. Oh, me. Look at that. Flash Friday in session. Now, Ashley, if you were listening to Coast 103.5, would you be uh, flashing chicks your boobs on the freeway? Absolutely not. Damn straight you wouldn't. <laughs> well, thank you for that. No, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the call. Sounds like she discovered a new side of herself there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number on this Flash Friday. Wide open telephones, headlights on, everybody. Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? This is Jared. I know. I just said that. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, after the Lakers lost last night, what did, do you feel that they're still going to win the title at all? Uh, you cannot uh, count the Lakers out. They lost a game on the road. Mm -hmm. They have not seen the Boston Celtics all that much. Uh, they certainly 
played a lot better against the Boston Celtics last night than they did in their two meetings during the regular season. Um, I think they're going to need uh, an adjustment. Uh, frankly, uh, I did not think this could possibly be a sweep. Um, and I do believe that uh, winning on the road in the NBA is very, very difficult, although the Lakers have done it in the playoffs. They had home uh, home court advantage in uh, the three previous series. Mm-hmm. So uh, they will make their adjustments. Uh, in the game last night, Derek Fisher had a great first half and a lousy second half. Uh, Vladimir Rodmanovich had, uh, I think, a generally lousy game. Uh, Lamar Odom uh, d- and, and Pau Gasol uh, did not battle under the boards as much as I think uh, they needed to. And then you had uh, Kobe firing up a lot of bricks, which is what he does when the other players are not uh, uh, performing. Right. I, I still feel that they're going to they're gonna win, I believe, in six. Yeah, I, I think they're going to win, but they're, they're not going to just steamroll over the Boston Celtics. No. They're not. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, it was not like seeing them lose by 20 or 30 points. It was 10 points. It was at Boston. And uh, really, uh, they only have to win one game in Boston. Right. And then they, uh, they go three straight in Los Angeles. So if they can win at least one in Boston, go to Los Angeles, win three there. I hopefully they're going to win the title. Well, I, I would not assume that they're going to win this in five. I, I I do believe it's going to go six or seven games. But I, uh, but, you know, I I enjoyed the game. But I must say that I enjoyed the Lakers pre three previous series more. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. I was I'm. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. You know, Boston. They played Atlanta. Then they went seven, and then Cleveland seven. And right. it seemed like the Lakers were kind of outplayed the second half. So I don't. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure what happened either, but they're going to have to figure it out. And, and uh, by the way, uh, you know, it, the regular Lakers watchers uh, have seen this before. Um, they play a game like this, and then they have to make their adjustments. And right. they will make their adjustments. All right. I mean, okay, Tom. Now, I anybody, anybody who thinks the Boston Celtics are going to win this or they're going to win it easily, they, they also are mistaken. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I still believe in the Lakers. Uh, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can, Jared. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lonnie on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lonnie. Tom. I am calling to give you the biggest apology of any listener. Okay. About a year ago, when I started listening to you, I could not stand what you were saying. I thought you didn't have a clue. You were totally wrong about women, what you were saying, the whole bit. You couldn't be more right, my boy. How did you find that out? Well, I went through, first of all, a nasty divorce. There we go. Where she literally, if she could have surgically taken one testicle, she would have. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a woman who didn't work one day in the 16-year marriage, Uh but felt but felt entitled to everything. By the way, the law in California entitles her to everything for not working. When you let a woman marry you and then not work for 16 years, you're going to pay. Yes, exactly. They reward the person that sits on their butt. They reward them. Right. Okay. Then I get into the dating scene, and I figure, I'm not going to listen to Tom. What does he know? Tom, you couldn't be more right. Anybody who gets on this show, especially women, and complain about what you say, it's baloney. You are so right on. I should have listened to you. That's that's not an uncommon sentiment there, Lonnie. So anyway, I'm calling to give you the biggest apology. You are the man. Thank you for that. Thank you. Could you take me out the old style, please? I certainly can. I'm going to say Montgomery, Alabama. He had an accent. Where do you think he was from? He didn't say where he's from. He couldn't be from New York. Montgomery. <laughs> Just a guess. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Will on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Uh, I just started listening to you about a month and a half ago. I'm a delivery driver for Domino's. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, you make my job pretty nice, man. I uh, really enjoy Hey, hey, hey. We're on the air. You can't say that word. Sorry. Uh, but she's bossy. Like, today, uh, the dog, I have a dog, and she tried to maul my cat. And uh, I started yelling at the dog, and I smacked her, and, and she started flipping out, man. And she's always trying to tell me what to do and everything. Well, why do you tolerate that? I don't know. I, I guess I'm too nice. Well, <laughs> nice guys don't get laid. Nice That's guys true. finish last. That's right, Tom. <laughs> But I was just wondering if you could give me some advice. Yeah. Uh, tell her to get lost. Tell her it's my way or the highway. What do you think she'll do when I say that? <laughs> Stamp her little feet. Probably say she doesn't want to see you anymore. So what? Yeah. No, I'm just getting sick of it, man. What do you need a girlfriend for? You're 20 years old. <laughs> I don't know. You're right. I, I, uh, I've been thinking about that. I need to lay as many chicks as I can. I'm young. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, uh, my God, Boise, Idaho is way to get out there. That's right. I just wish I was 21. It'd be a lot easier. Well, believe me, we've told you all the ways, uh, including uh, hotel lobby bars, uh -huh. um, family restaurants that have bars that have names like TGI Fridays or Hooligans or Bennekins. <laughs> Places that are not just bars. They're also restaurants. Uh -huh. They generally, generally these places, they don't uh, check your ID or require you to be 21 to come in. What about a laundromat? Well, put it this way. Hot chicks don't do laundry. <laughs> where, where is it all at? But, no, no, but see, when you go to TGI, now, I don't, do you have a TGI Fridays in Boise? Yes, we do. Okay. That's where receptionists eat. When a receptionist who's tired of her job and tired of answering that phone or whatever she's doing, when she's tired of everything, she can't go and uh, drink a $10 martini, which in L.A. would be a $15 martini. She, yeah, that's expensive. She goes to TGI Fridays and has a Long Island iced tea and, and potato skins. That's the place to meet hot chicks with no money. They all drive like Jettas. <laughs> they all drive uh, the new VW Bug or whatever. That's what they drive. Uh -huh. uh, they drive some little cheap car, and they eat potato skins. So, that, that, so that's the kind of place you want to go. If, you, uh, if you're under 21, go to a place like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not to mention the fact receptionists are pretty goddamn hot. Uh, they've got no goddamn money. Uh huh. You think what? Do, what should I say? To start a conversation? You don't start a conversation. You go to the bar. You sit down, like you're going out for an evening of hanging out at a bar. You'll talk to the bartender. You talk about sports. You'll sit there enjoying your drink. You'll sit there being a people watcher. You will not initiate conversations. You are too cool for the room. You think I should... Uh, I heard, I was listening to you the other day, and I heard somebody calling, uh, saying that they were in the bar acting like uh, they were like Derek Jeter or something. <laughs> Derek acting Jeter like is... Athlete. Derek Jeter is not likely to be in Boise. <laughs> Certainly not during the baseball season. Unless Boise got a major league franchise I haven't heard about. Yeah, we don't have anything here. We yeah. have a minor league basketball team, the Stampede. All right. Uh, but you have uh, Fortune 500 companies in Idaho, don't you? There must be a couple. Oh, yeah. We have Micron. All right. Well, hey, congratulations. You're now the senior vice president. <laughs> That's a great idea. Or you own how many, you know, that Domino's Pizza. How many uh, Domino's Pizza franchises does your boss own? Uh, well, uh, he owns like 14. Yeah? Well, guess uh, what? Guess what? You are now him. <laughs> so you think I should drop her? I, nobody bosses me around, pal. Definitely. I, I mean, she didn't at first. She seemed like she was really nice. They're always nice at first. Yeah. 
Then they, ki- then they, then they kick in the nuts. And I work my ass, my my ass off, and she doesn't even work. She doesn't do anything. Uh, what does she expect you to pay for things too? Yeah, she does. Like she's and, like, oh, take me here, take me there. I'm like, oh man, screw God, that. You deliver pizzas. Daughter. You're not taking her anywhere. Yeah, kick her ass to the curb. <laughs> And then she'll say, oh, please, don't let me go, and start whining like a little dog. <laughs> uh-huh. If I'm I were you, just, I'd dump her. Yeah? Yep. I just want to, I'm just going to, I think I should just drop her, man. We, we could call her right now and uh, settle this matter immediately. You think so? You want to do it? Uh, well, actually, she doesn't have a cell phone. She's a, she's out with her friends right now. Do they have cell phones? Does she, she had it near a phone number somewhere? Uh, they do, but I don't have I don't have the number. Oh, of her that's a her shame. Bossy too. I uh, I heard her talking to a friend in the other phone. On and I was in the other room the other day. And she was on her phone like, oh yeah. Well, Will took me to the movies yesterday, and he spent like sixty dollars and all bragging and everything. There I'm you like, go. Dude. No, that's. Oh. It. That's yeah, I'm bragging to her friends. I'm like, what? Yep. And then I, I brought it up to her. I said, hey, why are you bragging? You know, why? she's like, oh, I was just telling them how good of a time you were. I said, no, I heard what you said. Don't lie to me. That tells you everything you need to know. Good luck, Will. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Jennifer. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. I'm a first time caller. Cool. And I just was, had been listening to your show this week, actually, and I just heard one of the girls call and say about Flash Friday and another girl had their lights on. Right. I am driving on the 405 North, and I had no clue you had such a large audience because all of the cars around me have their headlights oh, on. Oh, wow. I'm a little intimidated. I didn't want to put mine on because I'm kind of a little frightened after hearing everything. You might see some nice knockers if you turn those headlights up. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could, like the girl before me. Right. But anyway, you have a great show. It's very diverse. I've been listening for this week, and I've heard you talk the other day when it was Obama. We, cele- we Obama. celebrate diversity. Yeah, and I heard you talking about finances one day, and I thought, actually, I want to jump in on that show. You have some yes. very, very good advice. And when that show ever comes around again, I definitely will call in. But I just wanted to tell you, Tom, you have a large audience, and I may be a new listener. Sounds good to me, Jennifer. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. (laughs) Flash Friday. The first Flash Friday of 2008. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Nikki on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Do you care? No. Listen, all I have to say is that I think that you and the guys that follow you are basically dated, old, fat, pessimistic, worn-out men mm. who, who c- marry the wrong women. Who could buy and women. sell you if we chose to give you any money, but we wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, the good. Who marry all the wrong women for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Now you're crying. And I, I, and I think that you are way. a leatherneck, turkey neck, old bag whose sell by date passed 15 <laughs> years ago. Who uh, to listens to talk guys, radio guys, because guys, one day soon you'll be worried about getting your social security rate. check and your yeah. AARP membership. No. The problem no, is that may no. be what you married and what you're used to, but the rest of the world's well, on We can hear what you are. You're a bitch. Yeah, I am a bitch. Yep. The thing about it is, is that regardless, women go to a bar, and what are they, attention whores? Guys hang out of the bar. They don't talk to anybody, and they're what? Being We just man. want to get laid. Right. So, in other words, you're there to get laid. Right. But the, the girls that you're looking for are attention whores. So, doesn't that make you an attention whore? No. It makes me uh, somebody who's on the prowl to get laid. And I makes I, you an attention whore, too. You're looking for attention. No, I don't want... I want no attention. In fact, if you want to watch... T- well, not you, but if a, if a woman wants to uh, spread her legs and watch television while I get the job done, that's fine with me. I don't care if she pays no attention to me. Absolutely. You're, well, the thing about it is not the attention. It's the fact that you're getting... 
someone to look at you and notice you and possibly I couldn't you care less, but you see, I don't care about that. I just care about getting laid. I care about ejaculation. That's all I care about. I couldn't care less about the rest. That's like saying I want attention when I go up to the to the to the drive through window. I don't want attention. I want food. Feed me. Well, I couldn't care okay. less if you I, pay I, attention I'm to me. I'm interested. Why did you get married four times then? Because I was an idiot. No, because you made wrong choices. Yes, and you the and, and just like choice. one out of every two Americans, I've made wrong choices. Yes. Yeah. No, I, here's the thing: me is, and fifty percent of America. Things. Yeah. The problem is your. By the way, what broken. is your what is your husband's name? My husband's name. Uh, what makes you think I got a husband? Yeah, I, I don't. Okay, good. Your husband's so name is, is Vibrator. Is your picker's broken. You got a broken huh? picker. You have a broken picker. <laughs> a what? <laughs> you have a broken picker. You couldn't pick a good woman if you were led. A to broken her picker. A sign over her head. <laughs> I see. That is so just brilliant. It is, I, it's it's amazing when it is amazing when an intellect such as yours meets up with a moron such as myself. I'm I'm blown away. I am just aghast at how. I hope you're taking notes. Oh, I'm so writing far, everything down. So far, I can tell you this. I'll be man. sending this off to the Guys, authorities. If you have a broken picker. You haven't picked a woman right. You said yet. broken yeah, picker four sorry. times. Now. All you did was get laid, and you were so happy to get laid. You married. That's you all we care about. And I learned now, why buy when you can rent? You think of that because you finally got laid and you thought you didn't marry But I don't buy anymore. I just, I'm, occasionally I lease. Oh, I see. So in other words... Then I turn your girls back into the dealer with a few extra thousand miles on you and I uh, pick up a new model. But meanwhile, the guys that find a wonderful loving wife, they win the lottery according to you. They find the lottery... Oh, because that's right. Because there are so because there. I don't think. By the way, I don't think marriage is wonderful. I'm just saying when they call in and they say they have a wonderful wife, it's the odds of finding a wonderful wife are the same odds of winning Powerball or Lotto. No, it isn't actually. Yes, it's, it is. Powerball and Lotto is, is about eight thousand times more of a risk. But anyways, I'm not really. That why they're happy? Uh, the they, lottery not, ticket is a buck. They're not pessimistic. Fact. Yeah, you you said all like, this. Do you have any new material, dear? Or are you going to oh, now just continue repeating the same things it. over and over? I'm just stating it over. Uh, no, no, you don't it. need to repeat. We heard it already. Let me uh, let me get Alex on here. Alex, what did you want to say to Nikki? This lady has no clue what she's talking about. You, you can't listen to this lady. She doesn't have no clue. Um, I'm 22 years old. I've been listening to you for four years. And you know what? When I started listening to you, you gave me the best advice. I was dating this chick, this gold-digging chick, and she just wanted me for my money. And what I did, as soon as I started listening to your show, the first week, I dumped the chick. I dumped there the you chick. go. I'm I mean, like, Nikki, no, Nikki, is just, Nikki is just a broken-down old bag, no, and she's, she's bitter. Even, that's not even mean? the thing. I no, mean, the thing is... Times have changed now, and you know what? Chivalry is gone. For some, it's still there, but not all. And, hey, we all need to have our fun every once in a while. We can't have no kid right now. Being Kids are raising kids. What's that all about? Tom gives the best advice. If you really listen to his show, you'll know what I'm talking about. I mean, financially, everything. This guy set me up. Ricky or Ronnie or what? You know what? I mean, what do you do for a, lo what do you do for a living, lady? Well, I'm going to quote Tom Likas. You're 22 years you don't know what either. I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking you what Tom just told you. I'm asking you what your profession is. What do you do right now? What do I do right now? Exactly. Yes. I'm a real estate agent. You're a real estate. Oh wow. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure you're just so, sore because I mean, the market is doing that great right somewhere. now. No, no, it's not. But what it, what my point is that you know what people are trying to establish a future and what they're doing right now they're. Like I said again, kids are having kids. It's ridiculous. Honestly, to be quite honest, I'm a personal banker. I see this every single day. It, uh, it pisses me off. I'd like to like just cuss them out right then and there. Say, what the hell are you thinking? Right. Listen to the Tom Micah show. It's number one. It's gonna take you so many places. Like I told you, lady, I've been already out of the country at least six times. I'm just 22. I already have my home. I'm working for one of the top 500. Uh, I'm sorry, they're in the five. Fortune 500. Fortune 500, yeah. So they're the, he's Tom's the greatest. I mean, if it weren't for him, seriously, I would I wouldn't have my my well, well, eyes okay, on the prize, and I'd be focusing on other things. So I highly strongly suggest, lady, before you start talking, listen to the show, then comment. 
Well, you. actually, I have listened to many shows, and I'll tell you something. You're not old enough to even be able to spell. Uh, I'm not old enough, but I've been through. But, quite I, but a few I can tell though, you this: no, you're you, going to learn I a have, lot in the next I've, five Nikki, years. Nikki is old enough to spell A A R P, though. Okay, but I can tell you this: okay, if pregnancy in young people's lives is a problem, then Tom's idea of getting laid every night in a bar is a great way to stop that. Uh, one question: Have you listened to his show? Have you really listened to what he's advised us? Absolutely, and I listen to it. All Watch your mouth; you're on the air. Oh, I'm sorry. Finding women that will be with you every single day does not stop the ongoing problem of teenage uh, pregnancy in any <laughs> way, shape, or form. Number number two: they jump without a parachute. And they don't years know old. any better because they're in love. Because they're in love. Two years old. Excuse. He's 22 gift. years old. You, you're not even. You haven't even started to find yourself yet. I don't consider you a resource. Sorry. Wow. Really? Oh wow. Nope. No, you're, you're a baby. You, you, you've got to start to learn. Wow, well, you're not as mature as Nikki. Because you, you know what mature means. Things. It means old. Nikki's not, very mature. I'm not. An, I'm not mature enough. But honestly, I manage a a, ba a branch right now. I don't care what you manage. They're one of the best banks. Now it does cause a lot of maturity in order for you to run a, a, a branch. Nikki manages her Beanie Baby collection. <laughs> I'm I'll pretty sure. Right now. I mean, right now. It doesn't. I don't care if you manage a bank. I don't know where exactly you're from, but if you're in California, I know that's a horrible market right now. But hey. You gotta do what you gotta do. I understand your point of view, lady, but honestly, seriously, like I said before, first listen to what Tom has to say, what his rules are. Tune in on Thursdays, listen to what he has to say, and then start talking. I know you said you are. I but do. I, I do every day. I do every day because I leave this and I just, I laugh. Because I think to myself, he's creating a society of men that are believing him because he's messed up four times and he's Oh, uh, yes, yes, as opposed to you, Nikki. Look how successful you are living by yourself with your kitty cat. Uh, there, uh, you know, you're the old spinster, your auntie Nikki who has to come over on your niece's holidays because you, you're barren and you can't produce any offspring. Uh, I mean, really, you're, you're so much better off than the rest of us. You're I, such I, a you position to be. I don't know what movie of the week Renee, you what did you want to say to Nikki here? Life. Oh, my God, this is the type of stuff I was calling about. Look, lady, it's 2008. Look, this is not a one-size-fit-all society, okay? You know, what Tom is telling people is, you know, he's not telling them anything bad. He's telling them, stay in school. Don't have sex without condoms, you know. You, you know, be young, have fun, you know, don't settle down. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, there's nothing wrong with that, for Christ's sake. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.